In this video, I'm going to show the development of a res sim model where I have two reservoirs in series. And here you can see I have the most upstream reservoir and then a reservoir immediately downstream of it. And on each one of these reservoirs, I have a power plant. So I'm going to go through and discuss the development of this model and, and show some results. I also get quite a few questions that deal with the optimization of a parameter within ResSim. And in this case, I'm going to have a discussion about the optimization of hydropower within ResSim. So first, we're going to look at this most upstream reservoir. We'll look at the parameters of it. Uh, again, I make these simple models to show the concepts. And in this case, I have a very simple storage elevation table. I do have an uncontrolled outlet. Basically, this is just an uncontrolled weir. I put the elevation at 160 feet with a weir coefficient of 3 and a length of 50. So that's uh, one of the two outlets. The other outlet is a power plant. And for the power plant, again, very simple parameters for the power plant. I have a maximum flow capacity of 500 cubic feet per second, uh, an install capacity of 2 megawatts, efficiency of 80%. You do need a tail water when you put in a power plant. In this case, I just made a uh, constant elevation of 75 feet. For my operations for the main reservoir, I, again, very simple. I just made one rule where I have this uh, hydropower rule, and you can see that it does apply to a specific outlet, which is the power plant. And the zone at the top of the power pool, I just made that flood control. The zone at the bottom of the power pool, I made inactive. And I felt okay with making the top of the power pool the flood control because for the plant factor, I use 100% no matter where I am. It's probably not a good assumption because you may not have 100% of your plant factor when you get low in your, your power pool. But in this case, just for simplicity, I made it 100%. I did specify a power generation pattern, and you can have seasonal variation in your power generation pattern. So starting on January 1st, I have no power until I get to 5 a.m. And then from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m., then I have, if I put in a one, it means that I want full power at that time. And then uh, again, I go back to zero power, and then I have full power from 5 p.m to, uh, I think that's 8 p.m. I do make a change for 01 June, and you can uh, put as many of these seasonal variations in as you want, uh, but for the one on um, beginning on 01 June, I have one cluster of power that goes from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. We can look at the other reservoir that we have. We can look at the physical properties again. Very similar, very simple uh, elevation storage table. We do have an uncontrolled outlet, which is just a weir, and we have the power plant. And I believe that it has the same parameters. So again, very, very simple model uh, with a constant elevation for the tail water. For my operations, again, I have a hydropower rule. Um, again, I made the zone at the top of the power pool flood control zone at the bottom of the power pool inactive. This rule does apply to the power plant. And for this, I made a power generation pattern that goes from, I guess I have two uh, clusters of power, one from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and then another from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. So we can run this and we'll close it and we can start looking at the results. So if we look at this plot, we're starting in the conservation zone. The top of conservation zone at this reservoir was 125. So we start in the conservation zone. We do have 500 CFS coming in. That's the dark line showing the flow in. And so we do have 500 CFS coming in. Uh, and then we have power generation that's occurring. Remember that the power was limited to 500 CFS going through the power plant. And you can see that once we get up to the top of conservation, that we are releasing all of the inflow and holding that top of conservation. And here you can see that we have this power generation that's occurring, these spikes of power that occur based on the power generation pattern that we specified earlier. 
and we can go look at the downstream reservoir. And here you can see that actually the pool doesn't move very much for this. We, have, we had a different power generation pattern. And so basically the power that's being generated is uh, moving out a lot of the inflow. So you do get some variation in the, the pool elevation, but, but not a whole lot. We can also go look at the power that's being plotted. We'll go back to the upstream reservoir and look at the power that's being plotted. Uh, there's a few things going on here. One is the, the blue line is showing the capability that we have, right? And the capability goes up as the pool elevation goes up. So capability would increase as either the pool elevation goes up and or the flow goes up. This red dash line is showing the, uh, it says required power down here, or you might want to think of it as desired power um, of two megawatts. But we can't get two megawatts. We would need more flow or a higher pool elevation uh, to create a higher head differential in order to get that, that two megawatts. The green is actually showing the power that is being generated. So it does generate, when we want it to generate, it does generate up to the, the full capability because it's trying to get up to two megawatts. It just can't do it because of the parameters that we have. So if you wanted to see how much power is being generated, you can go to DSS view and we can go look at uh, the main stem reservoir and we can look at the power plant. And if we look at energy, you can see here that this will give you the numbers in megawatt hours. So if you wanted to, then you can go in and sum the megawatt hours for the period of record that, that you're running. Um, now, if you're trying to do optimization on this, um, you may not be as interested in the total amount of power generated. You probably are going to want to know what the value of that power is. So what you then want to do is then uh, associate when your power is being generated with the the rate that you're getting or the, the amount of money that you're getting for the power that's being generated, both during that time of the day and also that time of the year. And so if you're trying to optimize, you're probably trying to optimize the revenue. And that's why you'll probably have to do a post process on some of these results with ResSim. And then you have to go in and and do some alterations in order to um, try to be able to figure out um, the optimum power that's being generated through ResSim. A couple of the other things that you might want to look at if you're trying to optimize, and again, I don't really think that you can optimize directly in ResSim. You can keep changing parameters and see how that affects the results, but I think that you will have to do some analysis outside of ResSim in order to be able to optimize this. Uh, couple of things that you might want to uh, also be concerned with is that remember that we had a uh, this uncontrolled outlet in ResSim. Uh, in this case, and this might be more appropriate for a dam safety analysis, but again, if you're trying to keep the pool level high to try to optimize the head differential and be able to generate more power during that time, you may also want to run some of these severe events, the uh, infrequent but severe events through the model to see, you know, are you going to run into any type of dam safety issues with the dam over top? You know, this could also let you know that maybe you don't want to keep the pool quite as high. And that's part of this optimization process also is making sure that you're not running into any concerns with dam safety. Uh, one of the other issues is that it's on the opposite end of the spectrum that maybe you're going to be worried about the pool getting to be too low. So if we look at our plot, you can see that in this case, we don't drop down to the inactive zone, but it could be that maybe you don't want to drop down to the inactive zone or some elevation even above the bottom of the inactive zone. Uh, maybe you have some water supply issues that you're looking at. So you may need to change the power that's being generated when you get lower in your conservation pool. And the way that you would do that 
is there's a couple of different ways. Probably one of the easiest ways is remember that here we have three zones. We have flood control, conservation, and inactive, and we have a rule that's applied to the conservation zone. But what you might want to do is just do a, a new zone and maybe call this last generation. And you can remember that the top of our conservation zone was 125. So you may say that, you know, once I get to 115, then I want to have less generation. And then you can add a rule that's very similar to this rule, but it can have less power generation. Uh, and then one other point about the optimization is that you can do this trial and error within ResSAM um, by going in and let's say that if we look at the power generation pattern, if you feel as though that from the results that you run from your long-term simulation that you could run more power, then you can always change one of these zeros to a one. But if you feel like you're generating too much power and your pool is getting to be too low, then you may have to change one of the ones to a zero if you're finding that during your critical period um, that your pool is getting too low. So. Hopefully that helps to understand how you could use ResSim to help with optimization. But again, I'm not really sure that you can directly optimize within ResSim. Um, I'd love to hear comments about this. And if you found this video helpful, feel free to subscribe to the channel and uh, you'll get notification when a new video comes out. And thanks for watching this one.